We can begin. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vidanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatati Shatari Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Ram Rama Ram Hare So this is a very special day, very auspicious day, the day in which Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan Hill. And Lord Krishna didn't just pick it up for a few minutes, but he held it up for seven days and nights. Lord Krishna did not just hold up the Govardhan Hill for one or two minutes, he held it up for seven days and seven nights. So why? What was the purpose of Krishna picking up the Govardhan Hill? Did he just want to show us how strong he is? Just like sometimes men go to the gym and they pick up the weights, you know. So is Krishna just showing off? Is he showing us how strong he is? Men, to pick up big weights, they have to have big muscles, they have to have very big strong arms with big muscles to pick them up. So does Krishna, Haribo, are you still there? Haribo, Kirtida, are you still there? Yes, now I can hear you. So, <clears throat> Krishna does not need muscles. One devotee was painting a picture of Krishna and she painted Krishna with very big strong arms with big muscles. But Prabhupada said, no, Krishna is not like that. Krishna does not need muscles to pick up the Govardhan hill. He does everything by his spiritual potency. So, Lord Krishna wanted to pick up the Govardhan Hill. One of the reasons was to protect all the people of Vrindavan as well as the cows and all the other creatures in Vrindavan because their lives were in danger. Yeah. 
Indra, the god of rain, had become very angry with the people of Vrindavan and he decided he wanted to destroy everyone. Indra is a god in heaven and he's in charge of rain, so he's very powerful. And the people in Vrindavan, they were preparing to do a sacrifice. The, uh, they were, every year they would do a, a sacrifice for the pleasure of Indra. But Lord Krishna told them not to do it. Krishna told them, you don't need to do that, it's not necessary. The rain falls everywhere, the rain falls on the ocean. Well, it does, the ocean doesn't do any yagya, but the rain falls there anyway, so you don't need to perform a yagya for Indra. Lord Krishna did not want the people in Vrindavan to be doing these materialistic, ritualistic, religious ceremonies. The people in Vrindavan are all his pure devotees and Lord Krishna wants to see them engaging in pure devotional service. So Lord Krishna told Nanda Maharaj, you don't need to worship Indra, what we should do, we should worship the cows and the, the brahmanas and the Govardhan hill. So the cows are very important and Nanda Maharaj kept 900,000 cows. So Nanda Maharaj was quite a wealthy man because the cows, they all gave a lot of milk and with the milk they could make ghee, they could make cheese and yogurt, many things. In the, in the Vedic culture, the cow is like a mother because she provides milk, which is so important for the maintenance to keep the health in the body. By drinking milk you get a good brain and with a good brain you can understand spiritual knowledge. So the cows are very important in society and the brahmanas are also very important in society because the brahmanas give Vedic knowledge and they guide the people materially and spiritually. Now in the Kali Yuga there are no real brahmanas. Everybody has become a sudra, everyone's become a worker, a labourer, 
There are no qualified spiritual teachers. But the Krishna consciousness movement is meant to produce people, qualified brahmanas, to train qualified brahmanas who can give proper guidance and educate the people materially and spiritually. So Lord Krishna said, worship the cows, worship the brahmanas, and also worship this Govardhan hill. Now why would Krishna want us to worship a hill? We should understand this hill, Govardhan hill, is very special. Govardhan hill actually came from the spiritual world. When Lord Krishna was telling Srimati Radharani, Lord Krishna was talking to Srimati Radharani in Goloka Vrindavan, and he was telling her that I'm going to go to the into I'm going to perform my pastimes in the material world. And Srimati Radharani said, I would like to come. But she said, how can I go without my Govardhan hill and without Yamuna river and without Tosi? So Lord Krishna said, they can come too. So the Govardhan hill was a very huge mountain originally. And what happened, there was a great yogi named Palastya and he was traveling and he saw the Govardhan hill and he thought, oh, this hill, this mountain, Govardhan looks very nice. It would be good for me to meditate on. I could sit on the top of the mountain and med do my meditation. <laughs> So the yogi wanted to pick up the Govardhan hill and bring it to where he meditates. So Govardhan said, well, I will go with you, but if you stop anywhere, then I won't go any further. You have to leave me. So the yogi picked up Govardhan Hill and he flew off. But when he was traveling, he was flying over Vrindavan. And when Govardhan was flying over Vrindavan, Govardhan was attracted to Vrindavan and wanted to stay there. So it was arranged that the yogi wanted to pa go to pass urine. So he had to stop and he had to put down the hill while he went to pass urine. <laughs> So after he came back, he tried to pick up the hill, and Govardhan said, no, I'm not going anymore. I promised you, if you ever stopped anywhere, if you put me down, I would stay there. So I'm going to stay here. So the yogi cursed Govardhan and said, if you're going to do like that, then I curse you that every year you will get smaller the size of one mustard seed. 
хотела снова поднять Кол Гвардхан. Он не смог это сделать, я ответила ему, что я тебя предупреждала, что если ты меня оставишь где-то, я больше не двинусь с места. И Дьёк проблем его и сказал, что каждый год будет уменьшаться So we, see, so we see that in the time of Lord Krishna, Govardhan Hill was very huge and there were waterfalls and there were many wonderful things on the, the hill. It was very high up in the clouds, went all the way up to the clouds. But every Time every year gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And it said, when Govardhan Hill becomes level with the earth, then Kali Yuga will be in full effect. So we have about 10,000 more years left before Govardhan Hill will be level with the earth. And then it will be all heavy Kali Yuga, all sinful activities. So, so this Govardhan Hill is actually Lord Krishna. But it's also a great devotee. Krishna appears, he appears himself as the son of Nanda Maharaj, but he also comes in the form of Govardhan Hill. But as Govardhan Hill, he's not only Krishna, but he's also a great devotee. So Lord Krishna, when Indra got, when Indra saw he was not getting the yagya, he became very angry and he sent clouds to pour heavy rain and to make it very cold and unbearable for the people of Vrindavan. So all the people of Vrindavan were very afraid. It was so cold and it was so wet and there was this very cold wind and heavy stones were falling from the sky, heavy stones of ice falling from the sky and the, the cows were not used to that kind of weather. They were going to die. They all came to Krishna and they prayed to Krishna, please save us. So Lord Krishna promises that he will always protect his devotees and especially he will protect the cows and the brahmanas. So in order to, to save everyone's life, Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill and he called all the people and all the cows, everyone come under the hill. Just like you have an umbrella, you can come under the Govardhan hill. Govardhan hill will be our umbrella to protect us from the cold. So for seven days and seven nights Krishna is holding up the hill and all the devotees are there, all the gopis and all the gopas and all the cows Everyone, they're all there under the hill. So, 
And they didn't feel any hunger, they didn't feel any tiredness, they didn't feel any discomfort. They were very happy to be with Krishna. Actually, Lord Krishna was happy to have to, to Lord Krishna was happy to pick up the hill because it gave him a chance to be with all of his devotees. Lord Krishna has many, all the people of Vrindavan are devoted to Krishna and the gopis, they love Krishna more than anyone, but they're young girls and they're not married, so they're not allowed to be with Krishna alone. But when Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill, all the people were together and the, so the gopis were all able to be with Krishna and to enjoy Krishna's company. And after seven days and nights, then Indra was defeated and he became humble. Before he was very proud, but now he became humble. So Krishna arranges like that for his devotees. When we become proud, when we forget Krishna, then Krishna arranges to make us humble, to take away our pride. So Indra had to come and apologize to Lord Krishna and beg forgiveness for all his offense. And at that time, Indra came along with Mother Surabi, who is a cow from the spiritual world. She also came to thank Krishna for protecting all the cows. So Mother Surabi, she bathed Lord Krishna with the milk from her other and Indra, he bathed Krishna with the help of Airavrata. Airavrata is the elephant which Indra rides on. So from the trunk of Airavrata, the water came out and it also bathed Lord Krishna. Okay, Indra uses Airavata, his elephant, to bathe Lord Krishna. And, and you can see there's a wonderful, if you go around Govardhan Hill, there's a place called Govinda Kunj. At Govinda Kund, and it was there that Lord Krishna bathed, that Lord Krishna was bathed. Five thousand years ago, when they bathed Lord Krishna there, the Govinda Kund was all milk. Now it's not milk, now it's water there. Sorry. When after, after they bathed Lord Krishna, all the the cow was using her milk to bathe Krishna. So that they, they made a lake. The what the milk from the cow made a lake. And there was a lake called Govinda Kunj. Mm -hmm. 
So the worship of Govardhan was begun by Lord Krishna himself 5,000 years ago. Lord Krishna taught the people of Vrindavan how to worship Govardhan Hill. He taught them to prepare many nice foodstuffs of all varieties. And he taught them to offer everything to Govardhan Hill. And 5,000 years ago, when they prepared everything, they prepared many, many nice foodstuffs. Then the personality of Govardhan Hill appeared and he began to eat all the offerings. When you offer to the deity, does the deity come and eat everything? Would you be happy if the deity was to eat all the offering? <laughs> so, they made a big offering for Govardhan and Govardhan came and he had everything. And he was saying, he would say, bring more, bring more. And they were bringing, they brought more, and they brought more, and they brought more. And still it was not enough, they said, bring more. He was, he, Govardhan was eating everything. If you go to Govardhan, you can see when you go around Govardhan, there's one village there called Ani Or. Ani Or means bring more. Because it was at that place Govardhan was eating. <coughs> and there were there were rivers of chutney and big a big lake of sweet rice. <coughs> and another hill of gulabjamins, sweet balls. <coughs> Right, yes. So, the Govardhan was eating everything. They thought, what are we going to do? We can't satisfy Govardhan. He wants more and more. But then they remembered, oh, we did not put any tosis. Quick, get some tosis, put some tosis there. So when they put the tosis there, then immediately, then Govardhan belched with mmm, indicating he was satisfied, now had enough to eat. But the people of Govardhan were very happy, the people of Vrindavan were very happy because Govardhan had personally appeared to accept their worship and to accept their offerings. They thought this is better. He said, We have worshipped Indra for many years. 
We worshipped Indra every year for many years. Indra never came one time to accept our offering. But this Govardhan, we just worship him the first time and he's come, he's, he's, he, he, we're able to see him, we have darshan. It's a blessing, it's a benediction for all of us. So the people of Vrindavan were very happy to worship Govardhan Hill and Lord Krishna taught them to, Lord Krishna offered his obeisances to Govardhan Hill. He bowed down. The, the, Govard, the Govardhan Hill is Krishna himself, but Krishna himself is bowing down to himself. Because Krishna is teaching all of us how to worship the Govardhan Hill. And then they all circumambulated, they all went round the Govardhan Hill. They brought the cows and the brahmanas and everyone and they all went round the Govardhan Hill chanting the holy names. So, in the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya also came to see Govardhan Hill. And when Lord Chaitanya saw Mahaprabhu, saw the Govardhan Hill, he would recite the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is sung by the gopis, how they glorify Govardhan Hill. The, Gover the gopis describe Govardhan Hill that he is the very best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. He is called Hari Dasa Varya. Yeah, there are many devotees called Hari Das, just like Prahlad Maharaj and Yudhisthir Maharaj. They are also Hari Das. But Lord, but the gopis say Govardhan Hill. He is Hari Dasavarya. He is the very best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. He is the best because he provides everything for the maintenance, for the nourishment, for the benefit of the cows as well as the people of Govardhan Vrindavan. In, in the times of Lord Krishna, there would be waterfalls there on the Govardhan hill and the people could drink the water and the cows also would drink the water and feel refreshed. And the, the hill also provides nice grass for the cows. The cows like to graze and to wander on the hill, so the hill is very kind to accept the cows there. And Govardhan Hill also provides fruit, many fruits grow there, and flowers, and different herbs and vegetables, 
They all grow there. And that hill is marked with the footprints of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. So there's a verse like that in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam sung by the gopis. So Lord Chaitanya, when he would circumambulate the go when he would go around over on hill, he would chant that verse which was sung by the gopis. It's in the tenth canto Srimad Bhagavatam, twenty first chapter, verse number eighteen. What? Twenty-four. Eighteen. Adari Hari Basya Barya Yadrama Krishna Charanam Pajan here. Like that. It's a very nice verse. Uh, you can read it yourself. So, Lord Chaitanya, one time Lord Chaitanya was staying in Puri and one man came, another devotee named Shankarananda Sarasati, he came there and he brought Lord Chaitanya two very unusual gifts. One was a stone from the Govardhan hill and the other was a, a necklace of conch shells. Shankarananda Sarasati. And he gave him two presents, uh, the stone from Govardhan and the necklace. A stone from the Govardhan and the necklace of the conch shells, very small conch shells. So Lord Chaitanya was very happy to get these presents. And he kept him, he kept this stone of Govardhan, he kept it with him for three years. And sometimes he would put the stone on his head, sometimes he would put it over his eye, sometimes he would smell it. And he said, this stone is directly the form of Lord Krishna. He said, this stone is very transcendental. It's not of this material world. It is the body of Krishna. So, after three years, Lord Chaitanya gave, these, gave the stone of Govardhan and the necklace, he gave them to Raghunath Das Goswami. <laughs> and he told Raghunath Das Goswami, he said that, you know, if you worship this stone, you will see Lord Krishna in this stone. You will see the body of the form of Lord Krishna in this stone. And Lord Chaitanya told, told Raghunath how to worship. He said, you get one jug of water and you get also the flowers from the Tosi tree, the manjaris, and you offer them with the water. Сказал 
много воды и заедут на джаре. And so Lord Chaitanya said, that is first class worship. When you offer eight manjari flowers and very nice water. It is said, Lord, Ch Lord Chaitanya, whenever he would hold the stone, he would You know, he would think of Vrindavan, he would think of Vrindavan, he would cry, and tears would come from his eyes. So they said that stone would always be wet with the tears from the eyes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when Lord Chaitanya gave these things to Raghunath, Raghunath would worship every day And he would also feel great ecstasy. He could understand he was so fortunate to be given these things by the hand of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya. Uh, Raghunath Ra Das understood that by Lord Chaitanya giving him that stone, he was telling him that you can go to Vrindavan. He was giving him a place in Vrindavan. And the necklace of very small conch shells By giving this to Raghunath Das, Lord Chaitanya was telling him that you have the shelter at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. So in this way Ra Raghunath came to, he came to Vrindavan. Now at, at one point Raghunath was even thinking that he would go to Vrindavan and he would jump off Govardhan Hill and commit suicide because Lord Chaitanya had left the world. Lord Chaitanya had finished his pastimes and he, he left the world. So Raghunath thought, I will go to Vrindavan and I will jump off the Govardhan Hill and commit suicide. <laughs> But when Raghunath, when Raghunath came to Vrindavan, he met Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. And Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, they would not let him commit suicide. They told him, Lord Chaitanya did not approve of anyone committing suicide. And Sanatan described, Sanatana Goswami described, he said, you know, at one point I was also going to commit suicide. I wanted to throw myself under the wheels of Lord Jagannath's Rathiatra chariot, but Lord Chaitanya would not allow me. Lord Chaitanya told the devotees, no one gets the love of Krishna by committing suicide. So Raghunath came to Vrindavan and he met Rupa and Sanatan and he, he was able to tell Rupa and Sanatan about Lord Chaitanya's final pastimes in Jagannath Puri. Puri. 
Then later on, Krish Krishna Das Kaviraj came there, and Krishna Das Kaviraj heard also from Raghunath about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, and he could write everything in his book, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. <laughs> So another devotee, we were saying about the San, Rupa and Sanatan, the two brothers. Sanatan is the elder brother of Rupa Goswami. So Sanatana Goswami, he would every day he would walk around the Govardhan hill. Every day he would, he had, it was his vow to go around the Govardhan hill. Even in his old age, he was going around and it's more than, it's like 24 kilometers. It takes, even for a young person, it will take four and a half hours. So, Sanatan was very, very determined every day he had to walk around the Govardhan hill. But he was getting old and it was becoming very difficult for him. But he did not want to give it up. He did not want to stop. So then Lord Krishna appeared to him and Lord Krishna told him that now you're old you don't need to do all this. You don't need to do all these things so much because you're an old man now. But Sanatana Goswami was arguing. He said, no, I have to do it. It's my vow. I cannot break my vow. I promised Lord Krishna every day I would go around the Govardhan hill. So then Lord Krishna said, here, he, Lord Krishna brought a stone from Govardhan Hill and he told Sanatan, this stone is not different from the Govardhan Hill. So he told Sanatan, you just go around this stone, you don't need to go around the whole mountain every day. And Lord Krishna also put his footprint in the stone. You can see the stone, it has the footprint of Lord Krishna in it. That Govardhan, that Govardhan Shila is still there today. You can see it in the temple of Radha Damada in Vrindavan. This, the stone which Sanatana Goswami was given by Lord Krishna, which is from the Govardhan hill, has the footprint of Lord Krishna in it. So you can see that stone today. It's there in the Radha Damodar temple in Vrindavan. So 
Some devotees in Iskon they also worshipped stones from the Govardhan hill. But you have to be very careful. If you take a stone from the hill, you have to replace it with a, the same weight of gold. If, if you take a stone from the mountain, whatever the weight of the stone is, you have to replace that stone with the weight of gold. It's also said, if we neglect to worship the Govardhan, if we don't observe this festival, if we don't follow, if we don't worship the Govardhan hill, then we may, we may be bitten by poisonous snakes. Govardhan Hill can assume many forms and Govardhan Hill can take the form of the snake, it can also take the form of a wild animal. And it can also take the form of rocks which fall from the top of the mountain. So if we don't worship the Govardhan hill, we may be affected, we may be bitten by the snakes, or attacked by the wild animals, or hit by the rocks. So before Srila, Prabh before Srila Prabhupada left the body, he had a very strong desire to go around the Govardhan hill. Today we are observing the Govardhan Puja, but two more days we will observe the disappearance of Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada loved very much the Govardhan hill and he loved to go around the Govardhan hill and he loved to offer this festival, the festival of Govardhan Puja for the pleasure of everyone. <coughs> So it's very nice to see that you're having a festival here in Kamchatki. Very nice to see you've all come together to observe the Govardhan Puja. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much for the lecture. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much for the lecture. Мы живем на Камчатке, здесь много гор, вулканов. К сожалению, здесь нет холма Говардхана. We live in Kamchatka and there are a lot of hills and mountains here, but unfortunately there is no Govardhan hill. There's no what? There's no Govardhan. Uh, huh? Uh -huh. uh, there, here, there, there are a lot of mountains here, but there, are, there is no such mountain like Govardhan Hill. Govardhan. Oh. <laughs> 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 but we, we make our own Govardhan. We, make the, we build a Govardhan. Can you, can you repeat, please? We're, we make our own Govardhan Hill. There is no natural hill, but we make a Govardhan Hill.
Oh yeah, so very nice. Okay, very good. Yeah. And it is also the Jai. Very nice. Wonderful. Мы живем в материальном мире, и некоторые из нас на Камчатке, где кругом Тамагуна вулканы извергаются. We live in the material world, and some of us in Kamchatka, uh, here is the real Tamaguna and the volcanoes, there are two volcanoes, and they are erupting. Постоянно меняется погода, и земная кора в подвижном состоянии. The weather is changing constantly, and the earth the surface of the earth is moving. Зима 9 месяцев и очень тяжёлые гуны, которые влияют на нас очень сильно. Winter lasts during 9 months. 9 months and 9 months. And this is uh, really this facts really influence on us Tamaguna. Мы, мы, мы можем замечать, как люди приезжают сюда вдохновленные, и через некоторое время видно, как их энтузиазм и настроение меняется. В общем, очень сложно нам здесь живется, и сложно держать сатану. It's very difficult to live here and to, uh, to follow our sadhana. А также заниматься духовной практикой, потому что приходится выживать, и гуны очень сильно давят. Because uh, it is also very difficult to... Um, <laughs> to, to spiritual practice because gunas affect us very strongly. Вопрос. And the question is как выйти из под влияния гун материальной природы? Um, how can we uh, avoid the influence of the gunas of material nature? Well, Krishna influence Krishna says in Bhag Bhagavad Gita that we have to surrender to Him. By surrendering to Krishna, then we can cross over the material energy. As soon as we take up devotional service, devotional service without falling down, then we immediately come to the level of Brahman and we surpass the modes of material nature. So devotional service will pick us up out of the material world and put us on the transcendental platform. But we have to be very steady in our Krishna consciousness. We cannot be Krishna conscious one minute and then in Maya the next. We have to be fully in Krishna consciousness. We have to really want, we have to really want Krishna. You have to be able to say no to Maya. So that takes some determination. We have to be determined, enthusiastic, and we have to be patient also. We have to be patient because it takes some time for us to get free of the material energy. We are very attached, we are very conditioned, we have been here in the material world a long time. 
очень привязаны, мы очень обусловлены. Мы были в здесь в материальном мире очень много времени, очень долго. But if we take uh, if we take up the process of bhakti yoga with faith and conviction, then we can easily get free of the material energy. Krishna helps. When we want to sincerely help to get out of the maya, Krishna will help. If we call out to Krishna, Krishna will help us. But some people, some people, they want to hold on to maya. They don't want to let go of maya. They want to hold on to the maya and they want Krishna as well. So we have, we have to be willing to let go of the attachment. We have to, we have to be willing to say, to let go of our material attachments. It is certainly possible to get free of maya, to get free of the material energy is possible. It, but it, the only effective way to get free of the material energy is by surrendering to Krishna. So surrender to Krishna means to accept everything favorable for Krishna's service. We have to give up everything which is not favorable for Krishna's service. We have to know only Krishna can protect us. And only Krishna is maintaining us. We are not maintaining, it's not us, it's not, we can't do anything, Krishna does everything. We have to hold on to Krishna. So we have to be humble, we have to be gentle and humble and know that Krishna is the master and we are trying to be a servant. And we should have no desire other than what Krishna desires. Don't be independent of Krishna, but be dependent on Krishna. So that is the meaning of surrender. Krishna came to speak Bhagavad Gita, to tell all of us to surrender. So to, sur to surrender properly, we need to have, we have to awaken some transcendental knowledge. And we will need also some detachment. Sometimes we think, I want to go back to Godhead, but I want to take my dog with me. I... We're thinking, I'll go back, I'll go back to Godhead, but let me bring all my family, my home, my car, everything. We have, to, we have to let go. We have to let go of the material energy. 
So chanting Hare Krishna, how to let go of material energy? We have to hold on to Krishna. If we hold tight to Krishna, then we can let go of Maya. There's a story. One time, the the bear. You know, we have a lot of bears there in Kamchatka, right? So the the, the bear, he got he got he saw he came came by and he saw that there was this plate with fruit on it. And he, he thought, oh, nice apples. And he went and he took the apple. But he went to bite the apple. It wasn't a real apple. It was one of these plastic apples. And the bear was trying to eat it, but you know, no taste, it's just plastic. But it looked like a real apple. He didn't want to let go. So then after some time, he came by and there was a tree and there were so many apples growing on the tree. But he had the plastic apple. He didn't want to get he didn't want to let go of the plastic apple. So how could he get the real apple on the tree? He's holding the plastic apple. We're, we are also like that a little bit. We are holding maya, we are holding the material energy, we are thinking, this is mine, this is my pleasure. We, we, don't, we don't want to let go. We don't want to let go. But we have to let go if we want to hold on to Krishna. So we encourage all of you, take shelter of Krishna, chant the holy name and worship Krishna, read the books about Krishna. Any other question? Okay. Okay, so so if there are no more questions, we will finish. We can stop here. Huh? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Gor back to Vrinda Ki. Hari Bo. Gor Premanandi. Thank you very much.